Welcome back to another video. Today we are in the Open Grade League running a different team. We're going to be starting with the Walrein paired with the Cresselia and then Auroras. So if you want to think about it another way, ABA team with the ice and let's see if we can figure this out. This is a... Oh, they actually end up switching so we're going to decide to uh, just bank a Icicle Sphere with the Walrein and come in with our Cresselia. We have to take a Moonblast but uh, unfortunately, we don't have a true counter to this um, opposing Cresselia. And because that we were late on switching, we decided to just bank a move on the wall rain and basically uh, take this Cresselia down low enough to where we can farm it later, I think, is the idea. Let's see, let's see what we end up doing. Obviously, we could have thrown um, the Icicle Sphere uh, at the Cresselia and maybe we would have been able to uh, win back the switch but we felt like the the energy in the wall ring served a better purpose down the, down the line later okay so we're gonna have to tank this okay never mind we're gonna shield this to oh that is the worst case scenario not only do we shield the moon blast but we also got debuffed while doing that so now we are committed i guess we're gonna commit to winning the switch and let's see if our opponent allows us all right so our opponent allows us to win back the switch but they end up coming back with the top of Fini. Here we're gonna throw the earthquake that um, is gonna do a pretty good chunk of damage right there, almost like 50%. Here we're gonna we're gonna try to throw the bait, but they got the move off first. We're gonna hope that a moon blast we can tank it, and indeed that is what happens. Here is the game to play. Will they shield? Okay, perfect. So we do end up getting a shield back. Our opponent is not able to get to any other move. We're gonna go for the earthquake. This is gonna guarantee a shield, or it's gonna take it out. Perfect, and now it's uh, GG's because we have another ice type in the back. Giratina is going to have to tank at least one of these, and they're going to have to um, sh maybe end, end up shooting the, the next one is their plan. They can't even catch because they don't have anything else at this point. Ah, they try to they try to get the ancient power boost. Yeah, maybe if they got the ancient power ancient power boost, this would have been a, a little bit more different. But we are going to be able to get this Giratina out of the way with just especially with a, a shield and we know that we can survive any move that they throw us at that range so we didn't shield and then here we're just gonna go for the weather ball for the ko you just our opponent right there um saving that energy from the wall wall rain in the, in the front ended up being um the best thing we did and the fact that we were able to win back switch just by investing one shield with the cresselia versus their cresselia was huge huge okay let's see what we do in this next game here here we have the wall rain. So this is kind of um, a good situation for us. We try to we try to throw the move um, before they got to the earthquake, but they ended up getting earthquake energy. So we ended up shielding that one. The reason why this is kind of good is because we don't want to see this against the Aurorus. Um, okay, our opponent ends up switching out, and now we are able to counter swab into our Cresselia. Um, Earlier, I was saying we don't want to switch out because we, we really only have um, Cresselia and somewhat the wall ring to do with the, the Swapper. So if we, if we were to switch out uh, into like a Cresselia or something, they'd probably have a counter swap. So I guess the best case scenario ended up happening. They did switch out into their Cobalion and let us find out that we can um, switch into our Cresselia. So we have, to, we have to maintain this alignment here. Okay, we do get the debuff, which is huge. This debuff will end up helping us survive this next move. Um, should be the Stone Edge. Yep, but it is debuffed now, so we don't. We can easily survive it now. Here we're just gonna throw a move before they get to um, their next move. This Grass Knot should be enough to take it out, which is perfect. Will they come in with their Swampert? Let's see. Oh, they actually come in with their Charizard. This Charizard right here um, is problematic for this Cresselia so we're just going to throw a Moonblast and we're going to switch out to chip it away. Here we have the Icicle Spear. Icicle Spear does get the shield. Our opponent is charged up to a Blast Burn. Will this be the Blast Burn? Yes it does. It still doesn't KO so that's really good for us. We are able to get to another Icicle um, Spear and we're going to see if they're going to tank it. They do tank it so that's really good for us. Little did I know we have another Ice type in the back. Okay. This Swamper is um, gonna be able to get to this Hydro Cannon here, but we have to get to two Weather Balls anyway because um, we know that they have a shield. 
Uh, let's see if we are able to get this other weather ball off. No, they actually end up getting to the other hydro cannon. But the good news is um, we have a chance to undercharge here and farm down and take out the Charizard. I guess that's the only play. That's the thinking here. A little bit too much of an undercharge right there. That was a, way too much of an undercharge. So unfortunately for us, it looks like they are able to take us take out that Aurora. So, so our only play right there was to um, get enough energy to have a um, weather ball and our Aurora's thrown at that Charizard because they're very close to a move. So GG's to our opponent right there. That that Swampert in the back was such a big problem. Um, maybe maybe I should have done like four more bubbles instead of just completely undercharging. That was a that was kind of a, 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 a sticky situation in the back here. All right, Jellicent is the one Pokemon we do want to see in the front because we don't have a true counter to this thing. We have to take this Jellicent down by committee. So we're gonna try to get shields down or big damage. So we just go for the earthquake because our team is triple um, semi weak to the Jellicent. We are gonna go for these big moves. Here we don't shield, hoping that they possibly bait and give us an opportunity to get to another earthquake, which indeed is what happens. We go for another earthquake for either potential big damage. They decided double shield. That's how much they love this Jellicent here. This Jellicent is okay. They actually counter swap and they go for the Talon Flame. This Talon Flame um, has the Flame Charge and Brave Bird, but here, because it has no shields, we're gonna take full advantage of this situation. We're gonna farm until they get to another charge move. Right before they get to another charge, move, we've got Meteor Beam off. That Meteor Beam does heavy damage, but it also boosts our attack. And now we tank the first move from the Jellicent, which we easily cleared. Now we have the shield here. And then we're gonna do our best here to um, take out this Jellicent. This Meteor Beam does not KO, but it allows us to have our attack risen and we get the farm down. So GG to our opponent right there. My guess, we don't know what it is, but maybe another Charizard in the back. I had a, had a feeling it was a, a Jellicent double fire, maybe Jellicent Talon Flame double fire, um, or maybe it was uh, another Dragon type, but either way that Aurora's was super strong towards their back line. Okay, so they counter swap into their wall ring. We counter swap into the uh, Cresselia. This Cresselia will be able to outpace all of these, um, all of the the Icicle Spears coming in. So we're not gonna shield until they shield probably. Okay, this 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 Icicle um, Spear does actually um, beat us, but we are able to tank these Icicle Spear. This is barely gonna um, not KO. And now we have a decision to make. Are we, just, are we gonna try to farm down or are we gonna throw a move? So our opponent here is charged up to an Earthquake. They throw the Earthquake. We are able to tank it easily. And that's a huge farm down by our Cresselia. It is basically at 100 energy. They come in with their Gliscor because we have two Ice types in the back. We decided to switch out to force out what they have in the back, which is ending up being the correct decision because they had a Cobalion lurking back there. Here, we have to make them think that we have the Earthquake. We go for the bait. We get the first shield. Here, they are outpacing us to um, the potential Earthquake. So we have to let that one go. And now this is the whole game. Do they shield here or do they call our bait? We go for the we go for the bait here and we do get the shield. So we get a huge um, play by our Shadow Wall Rain, getting to three Ice Skull Spears, getting two shields plus some chip damage. Uh, unfortunately for us right here, um, they did have a Sacred Sword and they wouldn't see MP tie versus the Cresselia. So we have to invest the shield just to get this Moonblast off, which is not going to KO, but it is going to do enough, I believe, to... Um, okay, they switch out and we know that they're going to potentially throw Earthquake. Earthquake does not KO, even though it does heavy damage. And the idea here is to get to two Weather Balls so we can take out this Gliscor and then have enough energy to take out the last Pokemon right here of Cobalion. Now, this Ice School Sphere, I don't know what this health is at. Oh, it, it barely doesn't take it out. Oh, wow. We actually beat the Cobalion to the last move. We were one fast move off from a charge move and they were also one fast move off from their charge move. So Juju's to our opponent right there. That was a crazy ending. If we didn't switch out immediately when we initially saw the Gliscor come back in, we would have definitely lost because that Cobalion would have destroyed that 
um, Aurora's in the back. So let's see if we can win this last one here. Can we end up on a good note? Great lead here. We know that. Okay, so this time we're going to stay in a little bit to throw the uh, chip damage of Icicle uh, Spear. And then we're going to switch into our Cresselia to kind of help us uh, maintain alignment. Uh, because we know that the wall ring has a favorable matchup against the Giratina, we can throw the chip damage and then we switch. So here, we're going to just farm a little bit of energy, but they actually get to a move again. We're going to let it go. The, the opposing Snorlax is already 50% health, so we're going to try to go for this Grass Knot and farm. We're going to probably one shield farm or just take it out. Let's see what my opponent does. Okay, they actually let it go. And we are, we, we, I think we saved enough energies to where like, we are able to get to a charge move here with this Cresselia, which is indeed what happens. This Moonblast will be doing roughly 45 um, uh, forty-five percent of the health right there, which is huge. And now we have two good things of two two good things to counter this Giratina. They do go for the Ancient Power Boost. They actually get the boost, so now we we need to take this out immediately. We can't really farm extra. They actually let it go. Oh, so our opponent ends up having the Shadow the uh, Charizard in the back. Um, two Shield Charizard is their whole game plan. It is the Shadow one, so they have to be saving the shields because it's not only high risk reward but it's um, fairly squishy. So the, the good thing about the Roars is it, it has the rock typing so we are only tanking neutral blast burn. Here we do save two shields for our own Aurorus and because we are able to get to multiple weather balls here and and this Charizard is um, shadow it is going to do enough. So GG's to our opponent right there. Let us know about this team and let us know if you enjoyed the video.